First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Don Leibel is uh, standing by. Donald, good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. I, I got to say, there's a there's a gentleman by the name of Scott who calls us, uh, who went to uh, went to college with you at HCCC, and um, Scott says hello. I'm passing so that, means, that uh, I, personal I message along. We knew him lovingly as Scooter. 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 Oh, yeah. He sounds like a scooter. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. We'll have to check on that. He does. All right, Don, let's talk about uh, what the topic is today. Uh, good morning, Don. Uh, good morning, guys. I'm, I'm really excited because along with sports, I love horror movies. I love horror uh, TV. The local of that at Cooperstown, Bruce Markison, who is an authority when it comes to horror, anything, television, movies, has just come out with a new book called Hosted Horror on Television, the Films and Faces of Shock Theater, Creature Features, and Chiller Theater. Now think back to your ute, as they would say, and uh, on Saturday nights or Friday nights, uh, many of your local channels late in the evening would show black and white, as I call them, monster movies, but Mm -hmm. you had everything from The Wolfman to Dracula to Frankenstein to other things as the years uh, progressed. Well, Lewis has just come out with a book pretty much on a history of uh, late-night horror television. But also, uh, in Cooperstown, he um, uh, also gives uh, ghost tours. Um, And you've been on on one of those tours, have you not? It's it's, it's called Cooperstown Candlelight Ghost Tours, and it's fabulous. He does everything. He walks you through the village at night holding his lantern and stops at some homes that you see all the time, and you learn about the history, not only of the village, but of what may have gone on in these homes. Uh, So uh, it's really, really fabulous stuff. And he's a local guy who, when it comes to anything with ghosts uh, uh, and and ghost-type movies, uh, horror movies, Bruce is the authority. And I wanted to make sure people locally knew about his book. Uh, Of course, like everything else, it's available on Amazon, um, (laughs) McFarland Publishers, and uh, give Bruce a chance to talk about Nice. Uh, his uh, new writings. Uh, Bruce, of course, is on the line right now. Bruce, uh, formerly of WIBX, uh, has moved on to bigger and better things. Uh, Bruce, good morning. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Bill. How you doing? It's been about 20 years since we last talked. It's been a long time. Uh, and congratulations on all of your successes. And uh, thank you so much for, for coming on here. I never knew... That you um, you have this horror film. Uh, I thought we were doing you know dugout tales from the Mets dugout stuff yeah. like that, and I saw this. I said, "Wow, this is a little different." Well, yeah. I do love those Universal uh, monster movies and things like that yeah. too. So, so that's uh, that's one of your. I mean, obviously, baseball is a big part of your life, but uh, horror flicks as well. Yeah, you know, it's kind of strange. Baseball and horror are two areas that don't really crisscross very much. Unless but... you're a, unless you're a Mets fan, and uh... <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, you know, it really started for me in the early seventies. Uh, my parents brought me these books uh, that had Alfred Hitchcock's name on them. There, uh, they were called Alfred Hitchcock's Ghostly Gallery, Alfred Hitchcock's Haunted Houseful. They were books that he didn't write. I mean, they were short stories that other writers had put together, and he compiled them, put his name on the books. And that kind of got me interested in the whole idea of ghost stories and horror and monsters. I started, as Donnie mentioned, started watching late-night horror, Chiller Theater on WPIX-TV, which uh, Mm -hmm. I think you can still get in the Utica area. Uh, Not Chiller Theater, but WPIX-TV, Channel 11. I would stay up late on Friday and Saturday nights watching a lot of these old films, not only the Universal Classics, but the Hammer movies, uh, you know, some of the vampire films of the 1960s, some of the, uh, you know, the giant creature films from the 1950s, and, and I really I really got into it. So I always had this interest, and I, I kind of would alternate between that and baseball. And baseball came, you know, became a constant for me. Yeah. But horror was also that second passion that I turned to quite a bit, and it's 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 still there for me all these years later. It's the only. Uh, it really is the the only type of movie, type of TV program, where you tend to have these crazy hosts that would would they they host the movie of the week, and that became kind of a. Uh, a thing that you saw not just in New York, 
uh, but all really all across the uh, all I know Syracuse and and really all across the country. Um, it it there's a cult following. There's no doubt, right? Oh yeah, I mean these were you know these were local programs. What happened was Screen Gems um, came up with this package called Shock Theater, and they distributed to independent TV stations around the country and made a lot of these old horror films from the 30s and 40s and early 50s available. Mm. They had not been broadcast on TV in some cases ever ever since they were in their the- in, in their theatrical premieres, and so they really encouraged these stations not only to air the movies on late Friday and Saturday nights, but they also encouraged them to have a horror host, somebody who would be in a costume, would introduce the film, would come on during commercial breaks, talk about the movie, but do it in a, in a fun and kind of a goofy way. Yeah. So John Zacherly was one of the early guys. He started in Philadelphia, then went to New York. And there were lots of other hosts. Uh, I know in Syracuse there was a guy named Baron Damon. He mm-hmm. became very popular as well. Most of them were not known nationally, but they developed these, as you say, very strong local cult followings in their in their markets. Yeah. And people really got into them. And in some cases the films weren't very good, so they really tuned in because they wanted to see the horror host, they wanted to see the skits, and hear the wisecracks about the film. So the horror host, in many ways, became as much of an attraction as these old films. Uh, there was also a uh, monster movie matinee, right? Um, yes. That, that I believe aired in, uh, in Utica, right up really till about 1980, or at least the early 80s, I think. Yeah, that, that was another one that originated in Syracuse, but it was carried in Utica by one of the affiliates. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that was another uh, program that aired in the Syracuse market. And, and those two uh, shows there, they became extremely popular. Now, if you go back and watch some of the tapes, you know, it's very goofy, it's very corny humor, in some ways, it might not fly today, but uh, we still have horror hosts today. I think a little more sophisticated guys like Joe yeah. Bob Briggs, who does a, a great weekend uh, show on the Shutter uh, streaming service, um, and you know he still in- incorporates humor, but he gets very in depth on the films, and it's a little more of a sophisticated approach. So it's it's something that's still going on to this day, even though it really started in the 1950s. Yeah. Um, Don, I, I want to throw uh, throw a, a question to you. Go ahead, uh, 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 Don. I'll I'll give you the floor, Don. <laughs> well, you know, even uh, locally on uh, MeTV on Saturday nights, the mm-hmm. Ben Gould uh, comes out of Chicago, and I make sure I watch that. Not so much for the movie. I I enjoy when they have the segment when they talk about the cast who was in the film, what what other works they've done, and and almost. Every time they, they show somebody in, in, the, in the cast, they say, I saw them in this show. I saw them in that TV show. So it, it's really uh, 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 like a hobby, but an interesting uh, uh, time to watch television. Uh, I grew up, as I said, watching those monster movies, and I can remember so many times my mother saying, don't watch that, you're not going to sleep. And I'm sure enough, yeah. I'd wake up uh, you know, being uh, afraid of, of the dark, so to speak. But also, you know uh what caught my eye with, with Bruce on this originally was uh, on Facebook and Twitter. He has the ghostly gallery, and, and nearly every day you could find, he'll have old posters, uh, uh, still shots from different films, and um, it really brings back a lot of memories. Uh, you know, it takes you back several decades, uh, some black and white, some color. So when I saw his book come out, um, uh, yeah. I proudly bought a copy of that and uh, put it out on Facebook, and I said, Here's somebody you'd want to talk to because, especially come Halloween time, you know, again with his ghost tours, uh, Bruce uh, would be the guy to talk to. Yeah, uh, uh, Bruce, tell me, um, uh, do you have a favorite uh, monster movie called Monster Movie? Do you have a favorite? I think Bill, it's, it's got to be the original Frankenstein from yeah. 1931. It's great. It's just a great movie. It's the it's the early days of talking pictures. That's really done well. Boris Karloff is iconic as the Frankenstein monster. Colin Clive is great as Dr. Frankenstein, who essentially creates him. Uh, it's, it's a really, really well done film. And of course, it spurred a number of remakes and, and follow ups. 
Uh, the great sequel, Bride of Frankenstein, came out four years later, 1935. Some people think that's even better than the original Frankenstein, but uh, I have to go with the original from 31. Yeah. Karloff is fabulous. And it's interesting, too. You know, you speak to people uh, who are other classic horror movie aficionados, and they say, back then, those were scary, scary movies for people that went and saw them. They were, you know, actually horrified by it. Now, you watch it now, and you're like, what's so scary about that? But yeah, yeah. at the time, it, it really did. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, when people first saw Dracula come on the screen, or they saw the Frankenstein monster be born, and they watched it in the big screen, this was this was shocking. And again, it was the early days of talking pictures. Yeah. So you, you add the sounds to these images, these monsters that, for the most part, had never really been seen before on the big screen. And it was... It it was paralyzing to some people. I mean, some people literally left the theater. People were screaming. You know, we think back now, and we look at it now, and it's tame compared to the violence of today. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, the back Saw then, movies. It was a shock. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and my God, you're right. I mean, today the re everything is so real. Um, it, uh, that seems to be where we're going uh, uh everything's got to look real and i, I don't know uh, so graphic it's yeah, always got to yeah. be a way you've never seen a person yeah. murdered before yeah. well, and it's interesting too though you still had people like uh, john carpenter when he m made the original halloween film that he was kind of devoted to not having any blood or gore but the horror was in the use of music and just the that William Shatner mask, yeah. Of uh, the face. I have Jeff asking about a documentary about uh, monster movies called Monster Mansion Memories. Um, mm. Familiar with that? Yeah, I've seen it. Uh, those guys actually uh, that put that together were at the Scaricon convention that used to take place at Turning Stone. And I met them. They gave me a copy of the DVD. It's really well done, and it goes into the whole history. Uh, of that program out of Syracuse, uh, it's 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 in depth, and they interviewed a lot of the people that were involved. Sadly, you know, the hosts from those shows, uh, for the most part, have either passed away or, you know, are very you know up in years. Yeah, but yeah. Um, it, it it's an excellent it's an excellent documentary. If people have not seen it, especially locally, uh, they should. Uh, Julie says there was a Syracuse AM radio personality, Bill Everett, who was a sidekick or something on Monster Movie Matinee. She said she toured the studio as a kid. Um, I'm sure you're uh, familiar with that as well. Yeah, he went. I think he went by two different names. Bill Everett might have been his real name, yeah. and I believe on the air he went. Uh, he was known as. Uh, Willard Lape, I believe, if I'm getting the name correct, right. but uh, it's I, I, I believe it's the same person. Yeah. Uh, when you're uh, when you're doing your uh, your baseball work, um, uh, are people surprised that uh, that you're a fan of of monster movies? Some of the teachers I work with at the Hall of Fame, they look at me like I'm just a weirdo, <laughs> which, which I am. Um, you know, it is a strange thing. My family looks at me like you know. Why, why do you watch these movies? Why do you watch these TV shows like yeah. The Walking Dead? They don't really get it. A lot of people don't get it. But it's surprising, too, how many people I run into. They might be baseball fans, and they also happen to be horror fans. And you just never know who's going to be a fan of horror and who's not. But yeah, I do get, uh, when, I, when I tell people about it, they, yeah. they give me kind of that dumbfounded look like, What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, Bruce, uh, finally, I, I, you know, your your time here at uh, WIBX, and then, uh, of course, moving on to the Baseball Hall of Fame. Talk about how um, how great it must be to be a, a fan of baseball and working at the National Baseball Hall of Fame, how, how that part of uh, this leg of your career uh, has, how, how it's been important for you and what it's felt like. Yeah, it was 1995 when I made the decision to, to leave radio and, and go to the Hall of Fame. And, um, you know, some people questioned me about, you know, why are you doing this? Uh, why are you leaving radio? Uh, I, I did enjoy doing the sports talk show on IBX for many years, but I'd gotten a little burned out. I was ready for something else. Baseball was, was certainly my first love. 
and uh, you know it's it's worked out nicely. Um, I've got a family out here now, and uh, we love living in the Cooperstown area. Um, I'll tell you, the one really difficult time was about a year ago when we had to shut down at the Hall of Fame yeah. for 103 days because yeah. of the pandemic, and we had to work from home. And it was, you know, as, as people have experienced this around yeah. the country, it was excruciating time. And now it's, uh, you know, three, you know, it's a, it's a year later, and some days you walk through the museum, and it feels like 2019 again. It feels yeah, like a summer yeah. day with all the people going through. So, well, let's hope it stays it's kind, that kind of stays nice that day. way. Yeah. Uh, quickly, uh, I have 20 seconds. Uh, a quick plug on where they can uh, find the book, where they can find you, and your tours coming up uh, in the fall. So the website for the company is mcfarlandbooks.com. You can purchase it at that site, or as Donnie said, you can go to amazon.com. And then uh, we do Cooperstown Candlelight Ghost Tours, as Donnie mentioned. Uh, go to our Ghostly Gallery page on Facebook, and you can send us an email. All we right. have our phone number there as well. And I want to thank Donnie. Uh, Donnie's made you know special efforts to promote the book, and uh, he's been a, a big supporter, so we really appreciate what donnie has done we appreciate the fact that you're having me on as well uh bruce thank you don libel as always we appreciate it don and uh have a great day guys thank, thank you, you guys thank you thanks bill thanks right. don